Welcome to One of the Odds of Football. Today we got a very special segment. It's our history segment concerning college football. We're going to talk about the Clemson top eight players of all time. I'm your host, Vincent Turner. If you like the video, please come in and share it. My special guest today is a guy who should know all about Clemson history when it comes to football. The guy was an outstanding defensive back in the late 1980s for Clemson. He played on one of the best defenses in the country. Matter of fact, they were ranked number one, Ed McDaniel. Briston Buckner, Chester McLaughlin, James Trapp, and my man, my guest, Mr. Dexter Davis, as we're going to break down the top eight players in Clemson football history. So if you like the video, please come in and share it. Let's get this party started. Coming in at number eight on my list is Mr. Davis confirmed that with me, Bernie Cuttingham, great football player, first-round draft pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers, all ACC and a consensus All-American while he played at Clemson. Yeah, tremendous man in the community as well. He's just tremendous football player at Clemson. Of course, went on for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Benny Cunningham was uh, second to none. And um, in, in this modern era of seeing how the full tight ends have now become part of the past, past uh, game of the offensive players, he was one of those ones in the late uh, 80s, early 80s, uh, late 70s. Coming in at number seven, uh, Jeff Bostick, the center. On their 1983 Washington Redskins Super Bowl team, the Hogs, they had Joe Jacoby, Russ Graham, Joe Thiesman as the quarterback, John Riggins. And when I think about Mr. Bostic, outstanding football player at Clemson, he was undrafted. But when you think about Mr. Bostic, I think about him eating when he's with them Hogs with the Redskins. <laughs> oh, Mr. no doubt. No, no doubt about it. He was certainly right. He certainly is what you call the equivalent of a dirty, dirty Groundhog, and he was one of those guys that uh, opened and dug the trenches at Clemson and, and did a, a tremendous job with the Redskins. Number six on the list, Jim Stuckey, defensive end, Clemson University. A consensus All-American, and his fame acclaim played on them two Super Bowl teams with the San Francisco 49ers that had Joe Montana, Roger Craig, Dwight Clark, another Clemson grad, uh, Keenan Turner, and, of course, one of the greatest defensive backs that played the game, Ronnie Lott, out of San Bernardino, California. So, so you agree with Mr. Stuckey? I do, and not to mention Freddie Solomon, who was something South Absolutely. Carolina native. So, yeah, nothing like a good cigar, right, Jim Stuckey? He was certainly one of the best defensive linemen to come through Clemson. Number five, Jeff Davis, linebacker, played on the 1981 National Championship team, had a great career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What more can you say? Was the mainstay on that 81 National Championship team. Jeff Davis, you agree with him coming in? Jeff, you know I don't agree with that. Jeff, I love you. I love you as a player. You play. I always tell you, we had the nation's best defense. I got to give that nod to Ed McDaniel. You benefit from the National Championship and being a solid Middle linebacker, the judge, nobody better than you, but I'm got to give a nod to the nation. Number one defensive uh, linebacker, and that was Ed McDaniel. Coming in at number four, Terry Kennard, who was a safety on that 1981 team. And I think about Mr. Kennard, he was an outstanding player on the 81 team. But I think when he got to the league, when he won that Super Bowl with the Giants in 86, and him being a safety on that defense that had – with the New York Giants, to me the greatest player to ever play defensively. I, I don't have to say his name. He played in the ACC. You might not like him because he was your rival. I'm going to put his initials out there, ALT, Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> and he played with Carl Banks, Leonard Marshall, uh, a good friend of mine. I can't think of the gentleman's name. He's from Pasadena, California. The corner can't come to my name. Mark, you know who I'm talking about on um, the other corner. But Terry Kennard comes in. At number four on the list. Arguably, he could be number one, one of the greatest players to come out of Clemson. And, and so, benefited from having a tremendous uh, leader in Jeff Davis. Jeff, you know, I'm going to give you your plug, but Terry Kennard arguably could be the number one player on this list. Number three, I'm going to let you take over. Ed McDaniel, linebacker. <laughs> Listen, Ed McDaniel was the signal caller, was our quarterback on the defense. We were the nation's number one defense that year. We had a tremendous amount of players from LeVon Kirkland, John Johnson, myself, James, Jerome Henderson. Uh, the list went on and on. I think we had 14 NFL players in that defense. And, and the cog of that defense was uh, Ed McDaniel. And I will tell you this, we played Florida State University in Tallahassee, and we had an opportunity to take that flag that the Seminoles throw in the middle of the field. <laughs> he ran out and, and, and coached. Uh, Ed McDaniel said, hey, Cole Ford, when he does that, we're going to pick up the flag and throw it on the ground. And Cole Ford said, you better win if y'all do that. He didn't say it like I just said. He said it in different words. Ed McDaniel led the way. We put that spirit up, threw it on the ground. That's before YouTube videos, and we beat Florida State. What I like about Mr. McDaniel, I, Mr. McDaniel, I like when he was with the Vikings. Boy, he was a tough, hard-hitting football yes. player. 
Number two on our list. Now, I want you to break this down to me. This gentleman has some of the best feet. LaVon Kirkland, consensus All-American 1991. Played with the Pittsburgh Steelers on that great Super Bowl defense. They had Greg Lloyd, Kevin Green, Rob Woodson. I'm going to ask you this person. How did that brother play at 6'1", 275 pounds and play middle linebacker in the way he could move? Well, I'm going to tell you, just as effectively as he did when he was playing outside linebacker for us at Clemson. He was not the Mike. Again, Ed McDaniel was our Mike, our middle linebacker. LeVon was our outside linebacker. I just kind of show you the type of team we had defensively. But he has, LeVon had tremendous speed. So LeVon was the reason why I could know that the ball was going to be thrown in three seconds. You know, point one, point two, point three. LeVon was going to make sure it was thrown. So I just, I'm, I'm in awe how he was able to take the outside linebacking ability to the inside and add 40 more pounds. <laughs> but what I'm saying, he played at 6'1", 275. Even when he was at Pittsburgh, they say he got up to 290. Uh, that's my point. 290. Yeah. And this guy can run. Yes. He comes in the number two on our list. It don't have to take no more. The number one player in Clemson football history, the young man from Gainesville, Georgia. I saw him play as a sophomore in high school, and I said he was going to be special. Matter of fact, I said he was going to have greatness, and he did not let me down. Back-to-back -back national championship games, won it as a junior, then went into the NFL draft. I'm going to say this to you, the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Y'all made a huge mistake. Like Dabo Sweeney's head coach told you on draft night, how in the world y'all go with the other guy and you don't take Deshaun Watson as the number one quarterback? And Deshaun Watson, as we say in the 901 in Memphis, Tennessee, he balling <laughs> with the Texans. Deshaun Watson, number one. Overall. Undoubtedly so. No problem at all. A better young man on and off the field. You're not going to find it. Deshaun Watson, hey, man, you've done a tremendous job. Deshaun Watson has taken Clemson of old and made it the Clemson of now. So Clemson didn't just come on the scene winning national championships and being a signature, you know, home home name. It became reinvamped when and it reinvigorated when Deshaun Watson got there. So thank you, D. That's our top eight players in Clemson football history. Now we have some honorable mentions that Mr. Davis was going to give y'all. Honorable mentions that could have made this list today. Uh, you know, when you think about Clemson, we're talking about not just guys that went and played in the National Football League. That's not the measuring stick. We're talking about Clemson football players. So when you look at and when you peel it back and come to true, just Clemson football players, you got to have honorable mention guys like Noob Hopkins, Sammy Watkins, Hunter Renfro's of the world, C.J. Spillers, guys uh, that have that were tremendous players. They're at Clemson. And so those honorable mention guys are guys who I would add to that list. And one other guy, Taj Boyd. A lot of yes, people say he yeah. got it started. Taj Boyd got it started, without a doubt. So not certainly not the slight Taj Boyd. There's a there's a plethora of other people to add on that list. Taj Boyd, uh, who works for a good friend of mine, Layton Cubbage. Uh, Taj Boyd certainly was one who got it started from the quarterback position. They need you to get it started from the defensive spot now, Todd, but quarterback-wise, <laughs> it was because of what you started. Let me throw some other names out there. Jerry Butler. No doubt. Perry Tuttle. Homer Jordan from Athens. Yes. Uh, let me thank some more players. Jeff Bryant here locally from Atlanta. Yes. Um, you give me some more. Right Dexter quick. Davis. I mean, Dexter Double D <laughs> Davis. I mean, you can't sit here and ask me now. That, that, you cannot you sit here and not have me say that. But, you know, Jerome Henderson's, uh, we had uh, DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins, Donnell Wolford. You Brian that? Dawkins. Brian Dawkins. The list goes on and on and on and on again. And don't forget about the great Danny Ford, because Danny Ford was the reason why a lot of us got to Clemson and wanted to go to Clemson. And he's still, to this day, the youngest coach to ever win a national championship. That's right. 33 years old. That's right. God bless. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Davis, for joining us today, giving us Clemson football That's history. Right. Go Tigers. If you like the video, please come in and share it. It's been a pleasure today. I cannot say I've been a kid in the cookie jar. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God bless. I'm going to send this out to my father, Chester Turner, down in the 901, mm -hmm. who's still living at 82 years old. Sir, you told me I can get to this level if I stay focused and I can be around great talent like Mr. Davis. Y'all have a blessed day.